Far, far away in the shimmering neon heart of the sprawling metropolis of Glarb 7, a planet known for its cheap drinks, questionable life choices, and its slogan, the galaxy's number one destination for those who want to forget their past, present, and future, something extraordinary was about to happen. Well, not extraordinary in the cosmic sense, but for Zane Ziggy Marshall, it was pretty weird. Ziggy, your average, slightly bewildered human, had ended up at one of Glarb 7's many speed dating clubs after a series of unfortunate teleportation incidents, which included a malfunctioning device, a disgruntled space taxi driver, and a misplaced destination card that said SPA, but ended up reading Speed IT. The venue, the Galactic Love Bazaar, was a place where beings of all shapes, sizes, tentacle counts, and carbon-based life forms came to find love, or something resembling it, or at least someone who wouldn't report them to the Intergalactic Revenue Service. For Ziggy, the idea of speed dating on a planet full of beings whose idea of romance involved neural implants and sharing pheromones that caused temporary blindness wasn't his first choice. But after being told the exit was blocked by a gelatinous bouncer who didn't speak human, Ziggy figured he might as well give it a go. 10 minutes per date, a floating digital sign above the table said, in bright purple letters that flashed with far too much enthusiasm for Ziggy's taste, or until your species violates local hygiene laws. Ziggy sighed, looking around at the colorful crowd, various alien species, all chatting awkwardly across small tables, each wondering why they were there. Ziggy had just sat down when she arrived, Princess Zilara of Zorblax. Now, at first glance, she didn't look like a princess. Well, maybe a princess with bad taste in fashion. She was in disguise, though the shimmering gown under her tattered cloak gave away more than she'd intended. Zalara had fled her home planet, desperate to escape her arranged marriage to the Zornix cartel's slime lord heir, Gorflax the Moist. The Zornix cartel and her family had planned the wedding for years, a grand interstellar merger that would solidify power, resources, and their unholy alliance, which in turn would have made conquering half the known galaxy as easy as ordering takeout from Glarb 7's famous fast food chains. It was perfect, except for the one tiny, insignificant detail. Zalara hated Gorflax and his slimy tendencies, and so she'd done what any self-respecting intergalactic princess would do, faked her abduction by an asteroid, escaped in a pod, and landed herself in the most obscure, least royal place she could think of, a speed dating club on Glarb 7. Ziggy, completely oblivious to the royal drama unfolding at his table, extended a hand as she sat down. Hi, I'm Ziggy. Earth. You? He said, wondering if this date would end with fewer tentacles than the last one. Solora looked at him, her eyes narrowing, unsure whether to be annoyed by his casual tone or charmed by the fact that he clearly had no idea who she was. Princess Zalara of Zor, she stopped herself, catching the glimmer of recognition in the eyes of the nearby hover waiter. Er, I mean, Zell, just Zell. Nice to meet you, Zell. So what brings you to, uh, Ziggy squinted at the menu. The Galactic Love Bazaar? Zalara smirked. Oh, you know, just trying to avoid an intergalactic power struggle that could plunge half the galaxy into a thousand-year war and maybe find a nice, non-slimy guy while I'm at it. Ziggy nodded, only half listening. Yeah, I hear you. Speed dating's weird, right? Back on Earth, we had something called Tinder. It's uh, sort of like this, but with more rejection. Anyway, I just got stranded here and, well, the exit's blocked, so... They stared at each other for a moment. Ziggy, grinning nervously, noticed she hadn't blinked once with any of her eyes. Zalara, however, felt oddly at ease. Like she'd just found someone who didn't give a quirk about her royal lineage her galaxy-spanning responsibilities, or the 12-foot-tall groom her parents had chosen for her. And for the first time in a long while, she smiled. Meanwhile, on Zorblak's prime, all chaos had broken loose. She's gone? bellowed King Glorblak, his usually vibrant green face turning a deep shade of chartreuse, which in his species indicated severe emotional distress. Yes, your highness, stammered his chief advisor a particularly anxious Zorblaxian with too many limbs to count. She vanished from the palace, left no note, no distress signal, and rumor has it she was spotted near Glarb 7. The king's antennae twitched. What could she possibly be doing on Glarb 7? 
That's a planet for deserters, rebels, and those terrible space influencers. Call the Zornex cartel. We must find her before she completely derails the wedding merger. Back at the speed dating club, Ziggy was leaning back in his chair, listening to Zalora tell a heavily edited version of her life story, conveniently leaving out the whole royal princess on the run from a cartel marriage bit. So you're hiding out, trying to avoid some big galactic drama? Ziggy said, chewing on one of those space bread sticks that always tasted slightly metallic. Yes, exactly, Zalara nodded, feeling oddly comfortable talking to him. Just laying low, hoping my family doesn't find me before I figure out what I want. Sounds rough, Ziggy said. But hey, Earth's pretty rough too. You should visit sometime. We've got, uh, a lot of problems actually. But the beaches are nice, Zalara laughed a rare, genuine laugh that echoed through the club. Several other speed daters looked over, confused as to why a royal princess in hiding was laughing with some scruffy death worlder. It was then that a loud alarm went off. The entire club shook as several large, armored Zornax cartel guards barged in, blasters drawn, eyes searching the room. A voice echoed from above, Attention, Glarb 7! We are here on behalf of the Zornax cartel and the royal house of Zorblax. We seek Princess Zelara. She is wanted for a prearranged wedding merger that will ensure peace, stability, and an uncomfortable amount of corporate synergy. Ziggy blinked. Wait, you're a princess? Zelara sighed. Yes, but don't worry about that right now. Just act casual. As the guards moved closer, Zelara grabbed Ziggy's arm, pulling him towards the nearest exit. You said Earth had nice beaches, right? Uh, yeah, but... Great, let's go! And just like that, Ziggy and Zalara disappeared into the chaotic nightlife of Glarb 7, leaving behind a trail of confused aliens, a canceled speed dating event, and one very disgruntled cartel. As they sped off in a stolen hovercraft, Ziggy couldn't help but laugh nervously. So, uh, what's the plan now, Your Highness? Zalara smirked. Well, if I'm going to escape an arranged marriage in a galactic cartel, I might as well do it somewhere sunny. How do you feel about the beach? Ziggy had never thought that out of all the places in the universe, he'd be bringing a runaway alien princess to Daytona Beach, USA. But, well, it was his local spot. And when you've just escaped an intergalactic wedding merger in a cartel, you don't exactly have time to book flights to Paris. As they landed in a patch of scrubby sand just beyond the main beach, Zalara gazed out at the horizon, the sun slowly setting, casting a fiery orange glow over the Atlantic Ocean. She looked around, wide-eyed, her pupils dilating as she took in the sights of Earth's oddities. Palm trees, seagulls squawking overhead, and a group of humans, shirtless, sunburnt, and in a permanent state of dehydration, dragging an ice chest toward the water. This is Earth? Zalara asked, her voice filled with the sort of cautious wonder one might reserve for a particularly dangerous but oddly adorable apex predator. Yeah, this is my home planet, Ziggy said, hopping out of the ship and kicking sand off his shoes. Welcome to Daytona. It's not much, but it's got personality. They wandered toward a wooden tiki bar perched just above the beach, the sign reading Sharky Shack in peeling neon lights. The bar looked like it had survived multiple hurricanes by sheer stubbornness alone, and the patrons looked about the same. Zalara blinked. It's so peaceful. I was expecting... She trailed off as if she'd been told stories of monstrous creatures in endless storms. What? Giant fire-breathing lizards? Ziggy joked, though from her expression, he realized that might have been close to the mark. Well, yes, she said earnestly. My parents always warned me about Earth. It's one of the most dangerous planets in the galaxy. They called it a death world, full of savage creatures, unpredictable weather, and what was the word? Ah, yes, Florida men. Ziggy chuckled. Ah, the legends of Florida man. Yeah, they're real, but mostly harmless, unless you're a mailbox or an alligator. He pointed to a local news report scrolling across the screen inside Sharky's shack. Florida man arrested for riding jet ski through Mall Fountain. Zalara looked horrified. What? Is a mall fountain asterisk? Don't worry about it. It's part of the charm. Earth has so many interesting stories. You could spend a lifetime here. 
and still not see it all. They took a seat at the bar and Ziggy ordered two drinks, one for himself and one for Zalara, who stared at her neon blue concoction with deep suspicion. She was still trying to process that this was the so-called death world her royal family had warned her about for her entire life. All those scary bedtime stories, the rumors about earthlings being untamed and unruly, none of it seemed to match up with what she was seeing. Instead, she saw people laughing, dancing in the sand, and riding some kind of small, extremely noisy wheeled machines they called motorcycles. It was noisy, chaotic, and strangely beautiful. I don't understand, Zalara said, looking out toward the water, where a group of surfers were attempting, badly, to catch a wave. I was told that Earth was full of dangerous creatures, predators, that the entire planet was a nightmare, Ziggy finished for her. Yeah, that's kind of the vibe we like to give off. It keeps the wrong sorts from moving in. But really, Earth's got its charm. You just got to know where to look. They sat there for a moment, sipping their drinks in companionable silence, the sound of waves crashing and some distant 80s rock music playing from the bar speakers. Zalara's alien senses, finely tuned to danger, were oddly calm. There was something about this planet, the salty air, the sun, the laid-back vibe that made her feel almost safe. So you're telling me, Zalara said slowly, that this so-called death world is just full of normal people, living their lives, drinking these strange liquids, and riding those terrifying wheeled beasts? Ziggy grinned. Yep, Earth's not all that bad. Sure, we've got some wild things going on, but hey, every planet's got its quirks. Just then, a loud revving noise caught their attention. A group of bikers roared down the sandy streets, their motorcycles backfiring like small explosions. Zalara flinched. Okay, except maybe that, Ziggy said sheepishly. But hey, Daytona's famous for it. Ever heard of Bike Week? She blinked. Is that some kind of ritual combat? Depends on how much tequila is involved in booty shorts and something thing called a mankini. The longer Zalara sat there, the more the horror stories her parents had told her seemed exaggerated. There were no ravenous beasts roaming the beaches, no deadly plants trying to eat her alive unless you count the crab shack down the road, and certainly no deathly weather events on the horizon. What she saw instead was a planet full of life, full of people who, for all their quirks, just seemed to be enjoying themselves. You know, she said, smiling softly, I think your planet is beautiful, and not in the way I expected. Ziggy raised an eyebrow. Beautiful? Daytona? That's a first. Most people would say it's more creatively unhinged. Zalara laughed, the sound carrying out over the ocean breeze. Maybe it's not the beauty of the place, but the unpredictability. The way everything seems so random, but somehow works. Ziggy sipped his drink. Yeah, we humans are a mess, but we're our mess, you know? And hey, sometimes you find moments like this, where the sun sets, the waves crash, and for a second, everything's perfect. Zalara watched the sun sink below the horizon casting hues of pink and gold across the water. The weight of her royal obligations, her arranged marriage, her family's ambitions, all seemed to fade away. For the first time in ages, she felt like she had truly escaped. I think I could get used to this, she said, her voice soft and full of wonder. Ziggy smiled. Welcome to Earth, princess. It's weird, it's wild, and yeah, maybe a little dangerous, but it's home and the bad press keeps the rest of the aliens away. So a win-win for this death world. As the stars began to twinkle overhead and the beach slowly emptied, Zalara leaned back in her seat, savoring the moment. Perhaps the stories about Earth weren't completely wrong after all. It was a death world, in a way. But to her, it was paradise.